Hey guys, it's Matt with Meat Church, and as you can tell, I'm not in my outdoor kitchen this week. We're here in Lockhart, Texas at Mill Scale Metalworks, coming to see my buddies Matt and Caleb, who have built us a brand new trailer rig. Let's go inside and see what's going on. What's up, fellas? Hey, man, Caleb, What's Matt, up? good to see you, you boys. Too, man. So I'm super stoked to be here in this air-conditioned facility. <laughs> right. Uh, what do you guys have going on? Sweating, first of all, uh, building barbecue pits, welding, metal work, you know, the, that working habit that we maintain. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you the thing that I'm stoked about. I already own a couple mill scale smokers, grills, um, I always tell people you get what you pay for. This stuff is built next level, so I totally intend on handing these down to my kids one day. And man, we love hearing that. Like everything that we do here, that's our intention. That's what we're going for. We're doing our best to just be as you know detail oriented and as focused to put everything we can so that it stays that way, so that everything's going to be an heirloom product. Yeah, I mean the details that go into the stuff that I have now just blow me away. So I'm done talking. I want to go see my baby. Let's do it. Let's, Let's do go. It. Holy shit. Damn, that is sexy. Thanks, man. That is, dude, this is so sick. It looks wet, I love it. Yeah, so that's a that's a high temp clear coat we put on it. It preserves the, you know, the finish, but it also has a nice color break, it pops. Uh, there's a really cool contrast between the, the glossy black paint on the trailer frame uh, that uh, goes against the, the raw steel of the cook chamber. I love it, so it's just like patina. Totally. And then you clear totally. coat it, which I love the rustic look. Yeah, we wanted to keep it, you know, looking really nice, but also keep it looking hot rod at the same yeah, time. Yeah, like with the white walls, like, dude, this is like my dream pit. Thank you. I mean, I gotta cook on it, but yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. It, and it's huge. It's awesome. Yeah, three doors is really unique. Uh, you have a ton of cooking space. Um, the doors are all, all counterweighted, which is handy because the, the wall thickness of the cook chamber is 3 uh, eighths. One cool feature of the, the door itself is when you lift up, the stainless handle assembly spins in your hand. Yeah. Wow, there's a ton of space. A ton of space. So the counterweight will hold it in the open position. Yeah, look at all that, dude. Upper slide out cooking grates. One really cool function about this is the way we build these tracks with this, uh, we basically recreate channel. And so it can come out, it can stop. You can touch, temp, fill, taste, whatever you need to do and not drop the cooking grate, not drop the proteins. Yeah. Um, and it doubles as a track for sausage rods. So if you, oh, if you remove this cooking grate here, the sausage rods are uh, over here on the side, but you can, slide those in, have sausage rods going across, and then you can, uh, you know, basically drape sausage vertically. Yeah. Same deflector plate. Same deflector plate as the 94 gallon smoker. It's a little bit larger, so you have more cooking uh, surface for the flat top or the plancha. Um, you can put a bigger water pan. Everything is scaled up. Yeah, I love it. I love cooking on this on the 94. The counterweights make it easy for a one-handed open and close. Yeah. It is still heavy. Yeah, I'm glad you put those on there though, so, <laughs> you know. Uh, three, three eighths wall thickness pipe is no joke. I mean, this is gonna be in my family forever with a, a smoker that thick. Right. I'm hoping anyway, hoping my kids like to cook. <laughs> <laughs> if not, they're gonna have a ton of stuff. <laughs> yeah, Yeah, because I think you, uh, what was the term you coined me with when, when I, uh, we decided on this new smoker? You called me a collector. A collector, yeah. No, yeah. And I'm all right with that. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's totally normal. Yeah. <laughs> uh, six thermometers, so you have three lower thermometers, three upper thermometers, uh, just to give you all kinds of references and controls. So what I thought was cool, um, you guys have already done a test cook by uh, a really well-known brisket cook uh, here in Texas. And you've actually run a lot of fires in this, right? And the, the videos that you sent what was crazy to me is that all six of these gauges were like even. They were. We did 
a series of different test fires and um, it was it was a lot we did everything from you know splits full-size logs uh, green logs clean smoke dirty smoke you know we have a whole list of things that we 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 check based on you know what are the, the possibilities that someone's going to get themselves into yeah. um, but we, when we when we had the coal bed settled down we were burning a nice clean fire it was even on all six which is well I think that's unique about you guys at least from my experience in the barbecue industry is that um, a lot of people can weld you know there's welders in my family and I appreciate all the craftsmanship but your craftsmanship is next level but you guys work with so many people in the barbecue and culinary world that like I said you had like I'll just say a very well-known brisket cook uh, doing this you get feedback from all those guys and integrate all that into what you guys do which I think is cool yeah I mean you're one of them uh, <laughs> but I mean thank you the, the most important thing that we build is relationships. And, oh, yeah, that's, and cool. that's the that's the driving force for us. It's inspiring for us. That's what keeps us doing what we're doing, but also it gets us to the next level of like trying something new. Yeah. You know, getting out of our comfort zone, uh, you know, prototyping a new device or seeing how people cook around the world. Uh, it's all about real conversations, you know, spending it. time around a fire with other people and then bringing that back to the shop and seeing how we can have a part to play well, that's that. how we met um we didn't meet through me looking for a new pit we met at fort worth food and wine and hit it off and right it was three mill skill units later here yeah we are. i i'll never forget <laughs> that was awesome i had to walk past a line of like 300 people to shake it's, your hand it's so. my boyish good looks <laughs> it's the hair all right talk to me about the doors okay the doors so uh you know one thing we're really proud of is you know, we focus on structural fabrication, cooking performance, design, multiple function, and you know, any kind of detail that we can put in there. So we like to put subtle details into everything that we build. When counterweights aren't installed, these hinge, hinges actually double as the doorstop. But since you have these counterweights, those are gonna make a connection to the cook chamber first and actually hold it open. Um, the trim is full welded. It's uh, rolled and cupped to have the tightest seal possible. And I can show you how we uh, raise the smokestack from the travel yeah. position to the cooking position. I want to check out the stack and then talk about the firebox too. Cool. So th this, this locking pin will hold it in the travel position going down the road. But just, just to put it up. I knew you had a job, Caleb. Right. Pretty good at that. Thanks. I feel like you could work on a pit crew. I mean, technically, right? Yeah. So you have a smokestack damper. So anything that's not controlled at the fire can be controlled here. So you can micro adjust based on your, your climate or anything that you're trying to do in the cook, cooking process. You can have a little bit more control here. It's also good when, if you have a late night cook and you're done for the night, you're, you're drinking some Miller Lights, and it starts raining you can just close it down and that way water doesn't get into yeah. the pit it's awesome you guys built this gorgeous trailer for it to sit on huge wood rack i've got all this space down the side for our yetis and all the stuff we'll need to take uh to to barbecue festivals uh and it seems like we could put everything we need on here well, we definitely had you in mind on this platform rack uh i know you have some big yetis so you have a big space so this whole area you can put Yetis, you can put storage bins, tools. We put That's the awesome. D-rings uh, on the sides, that way you can you know, put some ratchet straps down and, and secure it. All right, let's talk about the firebox. So the firebox, we built oversized. So we want you to have plenty of room to work the fire, move it backwards, forwards, experiment with different size pieces of wood. Uh, but at the end of the day, we want to give you access to, to, you know, this style of cooking is all about a relationship with the fire. The firebox is where it starts. The, this firebox is insulated, and if you look inside, you can see that um, it's just a, it's a wide open canvas. The firebox door is cut and scooped at the bottom to make it easily able to clean out and, and scoop out ashes, but there's a slight lip right here to keep coals from dropping yeah. out. Um, the firebox door is reinforced because it's a really hot place in, in the in, entire cook chamber. Uh, entire barbecue pit, you have to yeah. that out. Uh, the, the handle is multiple functions, so it, it operates as a latch driving down the road. 
but we weld this landing here to give it an intentional level line to operate as a handle. So, I mean, it could easily like hang out like this, but we want to we want to see it nice, clean, and level. So that's what that landing is for. And then it also works as a stop for airflow. The sweet spot for my 94 gallon is to just leave the door right here. It gets plenty of oxygen and make the more fine tuning changes on the stack side. It's perfect. Uh, but I got to talk about the badging on this. Like. I have to have y'all's badge on it. This looks super cool. And then you've got a little custom Meat Church badge on the end of the tank for me. We're in good company. I mean, we're really <laughs> proud to be here in Lockhart, uh, really proud to be a part of Texas Barbecue. And yeah, how cool is it to be right here in the barbecue capital of the world? It's the best. In Lockhart, awesome. Texas. It's, it's, it's the best town. No one move here. <laughs> <laughs> we're full. Uh, yeah. Let me show you these doors. Yeah. So, so now that the smokestack is in the cooking position, we can open up these doors. Dude, that is some serious cook space. So you have cooking grates that span the whole length of the cook chamber. Man. So even though there's three doors, there's four cooking grates. It's a lot of briskets. I love it. I can't wait to get this thing to a festival. Get the smoke rolling. Man. Well, I can't thank y'all enough. This is uh this is a dream come true for sure. So the stories this thing will tell many it, years down the road. It's hopefully. only the beginning. Yeah, this is killer. I think it's time to go make some videos yeah. on this bad boy. That, Cheers, you know, that's man. the next question. Like, what's next? Cheers. <laughs> like, what, what are we going to cook on this? What's the, what's the first video? Mm, mm. No pressure. Right. We'll think of something. Yeah, we'll think of something. Uh, there's been rumors that we should do a whole gator on here, so I didn't really think that has to happen. Yeah. But uh, as awesome. with any pit in Texas, I guarantee you the first cook is going to be brisket. Of course, you have to. So, all right, fellas. Well, I'm going to... Hitch you up to the truck and head back to Waxahachie. All right. Well, thanks Thank for coming you, boys. Down. Yes, sir. Thank you all. All right, guys. Thanks for joining today. I'm super excited to uh, get this bad boy back to Waxahachie, get to cooking and making video for you guys. If you like what we're doing, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next week.